you ever look at someone's stream and see all types of weird things going on? If you subscribe, follow, anything like that, loads of animations happen or like their OBS scene changes and you've always wondered, how would you do something like that? Well, today I'm basically going to show you with a tool called streamer.bot. The download link is, will always be in the description down below. And also a link to streamup.tips website, which is run by Andy Lippy and Waldo and Friends. Amazing OBS developers and YouTubers and streamers who built these types of tools for us to play with. On that website, they have loads of different free ones that you can just download and install. They're quite easy to set up. Andy Lippy has a lot of videos about explaining how to install each one. So let's say you, you load up StreamerBot and you don't really know what you're doing yet. That's perfectly okay. Just, you know, follow some of these tutorials, go your way through them. And that from there, then you will fully know how to build these types of things yourself. That's the exact path I done. And I just kind of want to explain StreamerBot to you guys. So when you first install it, it might not look like this right out of the bat, but all you got to do is just go over to settings, go over to Twitch accounts and make sure that you're signed in on your broadcaster account. So this is the one that listens to, let's say the follows, the channel points, everything like that. And then you also have like a bot account. So if you want to send let's say like messages in chat, but you don't want it to come from you, but you want it to come from your bot because you could also use this as your chat bot if you'd like. This would be where you'd fill all that in. Now we're not done yet. You also are gonna have to go over here to the OBS tab. You're gonna wanna right click, add, and then add your OBS WebSocket connections. If you don't know how to do that, you're quite out of depth already and you should probably go check out a tutorial on how to do that. I'll have a link down below. To give a brief overview, of the user interface for StreamerBot. It's a lot different than other tools like TouchBoard and LiornBoard. So if you've ever used any of those, you might be a little bit confused about how this all works. So the very first thing, it's actually quite useless, to be honest. You have the viewers tab here and it basically just shows all your current users in chat. In the actions tab, however, this is where all the magic happens. So this is where all the actions that you want to trigger actually happen. This is where you create everything. So let's say for example, I have the one here called barrel. So this will change the filter state. It'll basically just activate the filter that makes me do a flip and it plays the sound then as well. Uh, come on and a barrel roll. And I also told it where to do it, for example, quite an easy one there. We have other things as well. So it'll play like the follow sound. It'll change OBS scenes. It's going to wait um, five and a half seconds. Then it's going to go back. All basic things like this. Now, as I said as well, on the streamup.tips website, you can import some of these. And this is where a lot of mine have come from as well. So OBS Chord, for example, integrates a webhook to your Discord server. And that's how basically I have their Polaroid system set up. So for example, on my Twitch, there's a channel point to take a Polaroid. And what that does, for example, is it takes a screenshot of my OBS and then it makes it into the scene and then it posts it automatically into my Discord. And yeah, we kind of get some funny things that happen from these and they're great. It saves onto your computer, it also saves to your Discord. So if you ever lose them, you always have a copy, which is pretty cool. Going forward, then you have the channel point rewards, which is basically where you'll say, this channel point triggers this action, okay? So let's say, for example, I have the channel point called barrel roll. We're just going to double click in this, for example. It's called barrel roll and the action it does is barrel. So this is basically where you link it up. So the easiest way to do this, let's say you're after creating your first action and you're trying to figure out what to do. How do I trigger this? Okay, go over to your channel points, click add, call it whatever you want, test channel point. It's going to cost, I don't know, 100 whatever your tokens are you can tick this box to say if you want the user to have to type something in or if they can just click the button and trigger it you can do all other things as well so just change the background color how many min and max everything like that the most important thing here is that when you click action this shows all your actions that you've created in the previous tab so then let's say i want this to do the clip so when someone now does this test channel point, they're going to automatically create a clip on my Twitch. Moving over then again, we have things commands. So commands is basically like any other chat command. You type in this specific thing and this specific thing happens. I have some of these set up. So let's say exclamation mark clip. And what that does is it triggers the action clip. And if we go back to that, here it is up here. And what this does is it creates a clip and then it thanks the user creating the clip 
I'm trying to figure out, you know, more ways that we could maybe integrate the exact link to the clip and post it into the chat and stuff. Still working on that. What's also great about the commands as well is that you can just create them just for yourself. So if you're testing an action, you want to see how it plays out. You can just do it all from your chat inside of your OBS and you can really test these things easier. In the Twitch tab, I tend not to really use it. It's really only there for polls and predictions. And then you can have different triggers then to happen. Let's say if someone creates it, updates it, locks it, cancels it, everything like that. So if your channel is big into polls and predictions, this might be really, really great for you. If you use something like Extra Life or anything like that for let's say charity streams, you can actually use the donor drive tab and you can add in specific things for your charity. So let's say if it gets donated or the profile gets updated, you can trigger actions for that as well. So servers and clients is actually quite important. So for example, I always have the WebSocket starting. You also may need to set up things like the HTTP and the UDP, WebSockets, everything like that. This can really be used to help control the OBS, but also more external things such as Touch Portal. If you use Touch Portal for, let's say, you're just you know changing scenes and everything like that, if you don't like Elgato, anything like that really. There's actually a plugin for Touch Portal so that you can trigger events just by a click of a button on your on your device. Again, we've kind of already gone over OBS is literally just where you would link your OBS. What's really great about this is that if you have a two PC setup, you don't actually have to run them on the same PC. You can just connect whatever host that you want that's on your network and it should be able to connect perfectly fine. The settings are quite cumbersome, so I'm going to be quite quick. User interface, you can choose what you want to see and hide. For example, I don't like the viewers here because I don't find it useful whatsoever. So I'm just going to untick that box and then the viewers disappears. General then is really for queues and application volume. Again, you're never going to look at this. Twitch accounts, again, this is where you're going to sign into your Twitch account. Same as stream elements as well. So if someone sends you a tip via your stream elements, you can set up an action then to say, you know, thanks for the tip. Groups, I've never personally used. I've never felt the need to. Events is where a lot of your things are going to happen. So let's say your generic Twitch events, your follow, your whisper, your subscribes, your everything like that. So here we can say, okay, so someone follows me, do the follow new thing. And if we want to test that, I can actually press, press this test button right now and you'll see exactly what happens when someone follows me on stream. So we press the test and there we go. That's really how it works. But like you can go so much more in depth with this. So you can go with cheers, for example, and you can set up minimum and maximum ranges to trigger different alerts. So if you want one bit to 100 bits to be one type of event, and then 101 bits to 500 bits to be a different event, you can literally just do all that from here. And it's just so much better than using something like a little alert that pops up and says, thanks for the bits. You can make this super interactive and super fun. You can make it super meme -y. You can make it do whatever you want. Your creativity is the limit on this. For example, if someone gives me bits, no matter the size, we go into the saxophone meme flying through space and I can show you what this looks like now. And this was all just done with the stream effects and the move transition plugin. So if I press the test here, it might get loud. <laughs> Same with subs too, you can set it if only if it's a Twitch sub or a Twitch Prime sub, it can be a specific action tier one, tier two, tier three, etc. It's all the same. Same with resubs too, if you want different actions for different ranges of how long someone's been subbed for, you can set up different actions. You don't have to. Okay, that, that's the thing. You don't have to, but it gives you the option to be able to do that. And also it's all the same with gift subs, gift bombs. Raids, you can set up stuff as well. So if someone raids, you can actually see I don't have one yet. I gotta make one. Same with hosts too. Same with hype trains. And you can even specify which level hype train will trigger different things. So a lot of people do this for they like have like the scenes change depending on what level they are, which is really, really, really cool. And you also have community goals as well, which is that's done to your channel points. So if you reach a community goal, you can make it trigger an event. And then you can also have stream updates too. So if you want to, I don't know, announce the chat that you're after changing the game after you haven't seen yet down below the stream, you can literally create an action to post a message in chat saying, hey, game is updated to this. Or if you have specific 
overlays for specific games, you could also do it in here too. So let's say if I had a specific overlay for when I play Apex, when I change the game mode to Apex, for example, it will change what overlay that we're currently using. So that is really StreamerBot in a nutshell. I do plan on going a bit more in depth to kind of teach you all the different ways to create actions in future videos. So again, feel free to press subscribe if you're not subscribed already. You can also make sure to check the link down below to get onto my Twitch page. We stream every Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. And I like to share these ideas with you guys and create new things on stream as well. So if you have any follow-up questions and you don't want to wait for a reply in the YouTube comments or anything like that, you know, jump into my stream, ask me a question. I'm always happy to help. See you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.